Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drones replacing fireworks at Air Force Base Celebration. Superman drone used in Greenpeace stunt. And VIP TFRs continue to take a toll. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. One of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The drone revolution continues to show up in amazing places. Yesterday, Travis Air Force Base was ready to replace its annual fireworks display with an Intel-controlled Shooting Star drone light show, until weather forced them to cancel and postpone the event. Travis Air Force Base chose to collaborate with Intel to recognize active military, veterans, and participants of the Exceptional Family Member Program. Travis Air Force Base has one of the largest Air Force EFMP populations. The program's mission is to identify medical and educational service requirements of family members in support of active duty sponsor reassignment and civilian employment overseas. This drone light show is chosen in order to be a more inclusive July 4th celebration that can be enjoyed by all families, especially those with sensitivities to the sounds of fireworks and their explosions. Unfortunately, Mother Nature had other plans, and Intel noted that we decided to cancel the performance today as a result of high winds that would have interfered with a drone flight. Our drones can fly in winds up to 18 miles per hour, but the forecast calls for winds over 30 miles per hour for the time frame we were planning to fly. The drone light show was rescheduled for the next day, pending adequate weather. You're watching the AMA Drone Report on Aero TV. We'll be back with more in a moment. Hello, fellow pilots. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Well, we're headed off to Oshkosh for Air Venture, and we're really looking forward to it. Martha and I are going to be making a bunch of talks there. And we hope you'll come by and say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. And by the way, stay tuned right here to Prop Wash. We're going to be making some exciting announcements direct from Air Venture. Welcome back. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. A recent FCC Enforcement Advisory, the Enforcement Bureau cites an increase in websites that market and sell non-compliant radio accessories, particularly audio-video transmitters. AV transmitters require FCC certification to show compliance, unless they are only capable of operating on a frequency allocated for use by amateur licensees. If a transmitter is capable of exceeding the amateur frequency and power limits, it is illegal to operate in the U.S., even if the device operates exclusively within the amateur parameters. The operator must comply with all FCC rules and is required to obtain an amateur license. Workhorse Group tells ANN that a Surefly Multicopter is scheduled to fly on Tuesday, July 24th during the Innovations Day session at the EAA AirVenture Fly-In in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The manned flight will take place with an all-electric Surefly test vehicle from 3.03 to 3.08 p.m. Central Time during the event's daily air show. We'll be there to tell you how it went. There have been many changes made to the National Model Aviation Museum, but the latest will cause those who have visited to really take notice. This massive change involves reworking the museum lobby area, primarily the removal of the drop ceiling grid that has been in place since the museum opened in 1994. The finished product will open the ceiling all the way up to the underside of the building's roof, creating a space that is approximately 40 by 12 feet and 10 feet tall. Aircraft will be suspended in the space. AMA is also looking at rotating new acquisition displays. Solar power drones from New Mexico will be fighting wildland fires by offering surveillance information to firefighters. Silent Falcon UAS Technologies are supplying UAS for the first time this year under a new Department of Interior contract. 
Commercial drones may eventually be deployed to fight fires in all 50 states. In one case, Bridger Aerospace has subcontracted Silent Falcon to deploy solar-powered drones whenever the feds require. Federal authorization to use a UAS is a novel effort for the commercial drone industry, according to Silent Falcon CEO John Brown. That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Was it a bird? Was it a plane? No, unfortunately, it was some misguided clowns and Greenpeace using a Superman-shaped drone to make a bizarre political point by flying it through secure airspace to impact harmlessly on the side of a French nuclear reactor. And while it did not damage the nuclear site, they sure damaged the standing of the drone community. The stunt took place last Friday in a country which generates a significant amount of its electricity from the 19 nuclear plants installed across the nation. EDF, the state-controlled company that operates the nuclear site in question, reported that it plans to file a police complaint over the stunt. Greenpeace has a decidedly anti-nuclear platform that is driving such actions in a history of activism. But it appears they gave little concern to the damage they may do to the drone community and the immense potential it represents via such shenanigans. AMA has been conducting meetings with legislators and staff in D.C. to protect the special rule for model aircraft as the Senate prepares language for the FAA reauthorization bill. Recent events in Washington, such as Supreme Court Justice confirmation, may affect the legislative calendar while the other efforts take priority. The current FAA authorization expires the 1st of October, so AMA hopes to see the Senate address the FAA reauthorization in upcoming weeks. Once a Senate bill is introduced, it and the House bill will go to a conference committee who will reintroduce a combined bill for a final vote. AMA continues to monitor the prevalence of TFRs that limit model aviation and other access to our airspace. This past weekend, VIP NOTAM TFRs once again grounded model aircraft flights in the Bedminster and Morristown, New Jersey area. The AMA government affairs team has been working with AMA leaders and local clubs impacted by the VIP TFRs and remain optimistic that our members may have relief soon. Restrictions on responsible members flying model aircraft more than 10 miles away from the president are excessive. Of course, the safety of the president takes precedence, but we encourage the FAA and United States Secret Service to finalize a waiver process for AMA clubs flying within the outer limits of the TFR. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.